good evening everybody this is Dr. Hack and we're gonna look at a little more Sicilian today as white of course but first I think I need to elaborate slightly on some of the things I said last time with in regard to ratings because I, I I watched that back a few times and I didn't even know what I was saying so let me let me just show you with a, with a visualization so imagine that your chest rating was represented by these 100 boxes. Now let's split these boxes in half so that we're only looking at the games where you played with the white pieces. Remember, you'd be playing about half of the time with white and half of the time with black. In 2023, I played against four openings with the white pieces. I played against the Sicilian defense, the Scotch game, the Karo Khan, and the Scandinavian. So first, I'm going to split the games apart into each category, representing how many games I played of each type this year. And then I'm going to color coordinate them so that we can easily see them a little bit later on. Yellow for Sicilian, red for Scotch, blue for Karakhan, and green for Scandinavian. So now we've got a visual representation of all the games that I played with white. How about all the games that I won with white? Let's add a circle to the drawing and let's fill it in with all of the games out of this pool that I won in each of the categories. And now we have a visual representation of all of the games that affected my rating this year. You can notice that because I am fairly high rated, the Sicilian was a large chunk of my rating this year. It, it took over half of it, as a matter of fact. And if I were 800 or 1,000 points lower than I currently am, the number of red bricks in that pool would be significantly larger and the number of yellow bricks in that pool would be significantly smaller. Those two kind of teeter-totter. They exchange places the higher up the ladder you go. So your reality right now as to what's going to affect your rating the most will depend on where you are on the ladder right now. I hope this helps to clarify what I said last time. Let's get back to the Sicilian. So the part of the Sicilian I'd like to talk about today is the part with the coolest name. You know, the dragon. The one that we all look at at some point in our careers and we go, dragon sounds fierce, I should play the dragon. And so we all do for a while. It turns out that the dragon is a very aggressive version of the Sicilian for black. They they tend to like to attack a lot, and uh, and you can see where the attacks you know kind of coming from. It's starting here. We can see it even forming up right with the bishop, and maybe the queen's going to come out that away and attack over there, and this knight's going to end up here, and that's attacking these two in the middle, right? So black seems to have this this whole thing plotted out as the way his, his pieces develop. Um, but what if? What if we took that, that knowledge, we know where his arrows are going, and we turned those arrows, you know, upside down? What if this arrow that was pointing down this way was pointing back up that way? Well, that would be something. That would be outside collegeing our opponent. Uh, and so we play a move like d4. And, you know, if he takes it, which he could play lots of moves, he could defend this pawn with a b pawn or a couple of different things, right, with a queen. If he takes it, we'll come back to those other ones. Don't you worry. If he takes it, we end up with a queen that's pointing the arrow back the other way. And so we have, a, you know, essentially taken what he wanted to do and done it back to him. That's pretty cool. Okay, and that's how we can start this one off and, and be aggressive against our aggressive opponent and make him defend. Um, and so if they block, I, I would assume they're going to block with the knight. They could also, could also block with a pawn, but that, to me, that looks very weird because now what does he do with this guy? You know, it's going to end up in a, in a very strange place. Um, so normally you'd see the knight come there, I guess. And now I think if you guys were to pause the video and come up with a move, I think a lot of you would start, you know, drooling. And, and you would be like, small piece attacks, big piece. I got to come up with this and attack the knight, right? You, you need to get a napkin. You need to, you need to stop that. Calm down. Because, because if you were to play this move, it's okay. But he can actually counterattack, and he can play, you know, attacking a bigger thing. And now that whole thing that we wanted to happen, we wanted to get this rook, didn't we? We were so heart set on it, or at least I was. And now all of a sudden our queen's moving off of that diagonal. Oh, that doesn't sound fun at all. So 
we need to do something called prophylaxis here. And prophylaxis is understanding what your opponent could do and then stopping it before it happens. Okay? And remember from the last video, we decided this bishop over here is not as useful as this knight over here in this game because this pawn here, no, oh no, no, this pawn here hasn't moved yet and it could block up that diagonal if it wanted to. So what we're going to do is we're going to place this piece before the knight even arrives on the square. We're preparing to just rip that knight off the board. And, uh, and if he should put it there, we're going to be like, nope, can't do that. Right? And so maybe, maybe our opponent is wise to that. Maybe he goes, oh, maybe my knight will be more useful. I don't know if they even think that way, guys. Uh, but, but what if he does? And then he plays a6 instead. My opponents do this all the time. Well, now we can actually start that attack because for one move only, until that bishop is gone, he can't develop the knight. And so we can play a move like e5. And if he takes the bishop, we can take his knight. And now we're looking at a situation where he's got some really, really, really bad pawns. And those are going to be targets later. And we know they're going to be targets later. We are no fools. Right? We're going to aim stuff at him, we're going to go win them, and we're going to try to win the game. Now, if he were to take the extra pawn, I suppose he could. Now there's even another bad one, another target. This is worth exploring further, this position. Uh, I believe white is way ahead, and yet there are so many ways to take on black that maybe you should find one that works for you. Let's go back for a minute to this moment where he took our d4 pawn. And let's try to figure out what happens if he doesn't take that deep pawn. It doesn't bring our queen into the middle where we're refuting his idea. Um, let's defend it with a b-pawn first. We'll try them all, but let's try this one. How are we going to do this? Right, We're playing white. Can you do this one tactically? Pause the video for a minute. Find the weak spots. See if you can solve it. Okay, so, so this pawn is under attack once and defended once. That's a weak spot, right? And this rook is not defended at all. Huh. And there is a square that attacks both of those things. Let me use a different color. There's a square that attacks both of those things right here on d5. Now is it all making sense? What if we were to trade this pawn off the board and then play our queen right into that square where it could attack both of those things? We might win a pawn doing that, right? He's going to have to block with the knight. And that's where the whole pawn. Now we're ahead in the opening with two pieces developed against one. I think it was worth it. I don't know, guys. So maybe he shouldn't maybe he shouldn't defend with this one. That seems silly. What if he defends with the deep on? I you guys are you already know how silly this one is just by just by looking for like three seconds. Because we know that castling is pretty helpful to bring those rooks into the game. And we all know as beginners what happens if we don't get to castle, right? What happens if we don't get the castle? Usually our king becomes not very safe and it becomes not very fun of a game, <laughs> right? And so maybe in this one, your plan for, for white is to somehow attack the king in the middle. Maybe you'd want to develop this piece next, wherever you put it, right? You could, you could attack the pawn. You could put it here to try to go after this fork. Whatever you wanted to do. What if you do one of those things and then castle and give him a check? Well, that could be good, right? We could develop very rapidly doing that and try to make some kind of an attack work. I don't think this is what black wants. I think they, they should be able to do better than this. I would hope, right? Okay, well, what else do they have? Maybe, maybe they defend it with the bishop. Now this bishop's defending the pawn. That sounds pretty okay, right? Without looking at any moves on this one, I can tell you that this is going to be difficult for black to play. And the reason I say that is he has only one piece back here that can defend all these black squares. And these black squares are on multiple diagonals. They're not all in one diagonal, so the bishop can't cover them all with the same move. It's going to be difficult for him to keep your stuff out of his face. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's the technical way to say it. Keep the stuff out of his face. So, so if you could find a way to aim things at these squares, this is the conceptualization of an idea right? Uh, you should be able to get an advantage on the dark squares. There's just too many of them there for him to defend. And so now we're looking for ways to do that. Do we play e5? Do we bring the knight out and use the bishop right, to do it? If you could trade off these two pieces, would you do it? I think so, because then maybe you could plant a knight up here and there'd be nothing to get rid of it. 
moving, making a move like that, and this knight popping in there for check, or in here, right? So I believe that black is going to have significant trouble defending his black squares. You should explore this one further on your own. Remember, I don't fill in all the holes. I just give you the ideas. And I really hope this helps somebody. I really hope you get something out of it and you can play this so much better. You guys take care. Have a good one. Bye now.